What is up, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3. Very close now to seeing the completion of this cooling uh, cryo setup 1.0 fail thing. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe and like. It really helps your channel. Appreciate that very much. So there is some, everybody is working on this, but as you can see there, there was a bit of scaffolding ladders that were missing to enable them to reach the higher parts. So, and the uh, base of that. So I've just chucked that down as well to allow them to, you can see the piping is in place. Why I did that really ugly loop there of, of piping. It looks like a key, right? That looks like a key. I didn't mean to do that. It looks like a key now. I didn't see that when I did it. And it, it's very inefficient anyway. Because when it goes away from them, really, it's... Yeah, anyway, I'm not going to bore you with that. For now, we've got to wait for it to be finished. Then load it up with some ethanol and see how well it works. Also, each of those platforms needs to be bricked up or uh, doors on. Because I want to keep all of that heat, cold, whichever one takes over, trapped in there. If I'm trying to heat or cool uh, the entire outside of the base, that will be a bit messy. The advantage to this is you can see there we've got almost what is that like three quarters of that tank there the green background is chlorine that's why i've color coded them like that so yeah about three quarters of a tank that tank holds five thousand i believe five thousand kilograms so it's about three and a half thousand kilograms of chlorine gas what that will condense down to as a liquid i don't know um, I'm pretty sure it won't be three and a half thousand liters of liquid. That would make no sense. Um, the small chlorine oxidizer tank holds 450. So a decent amount. Again, in terms of efficiency, I'm not sure how much better, if it's better, etc. You can also use liquid oxygen. Um, and again, I am waiting for somebody to give me the information on which one's the most efficient or if they're both the same. Uh, liquid oxygen is also doable, and we have a lot more of that, of course. Um, but you have to get that colder than the chlorine. Jumping ahead for your benefit on that project now. You can see a couple of cycles later, we finally have finished it. I'm not going to power the doors because really there's no reason anybody should go into them rooms unless the machines break. Still waiting for some of the piping, the long distance piping to be done. And that one there you can see is to get the coolant up into the loop to see how it goes. I can speed them up now though. I left these a lower setting, a lower uh, priority because of course I level 10 all of this to get it done. The gas, as you can see, really easy to do because, well, it's right next to it. So pipe in there, put it in. Um, yes, hydrogen's in there because I brain farted and did it wrong. Hopefully we can push that out or the chlorine itself will push that up. Either or. Uh, the ones above that, of course, that should be hydrogen because that's a cooling system. Now, hydrogen is the best gas for heat transference. So in a cooling room or a loop like we're having, hydrogen is where you want to be. And you can see there the drill cone is doing its thing. About three quarters of the diamond left to use. Hopefully it's going to get us some slime and algae. Slime is critical for fertilization of crops and some critters but yeah the chlorine itself as a gas is actually like the opposite to that so it transfers heat very very slowly in fact you could argue it's like a decent insulator um now it's a decent it's decent as an insulator but a better insulator is a vacuum so let's not argue with that vacuum is the best insulator because a vacuum transfers zero heat permanently that is just how a vacuum works if you're going to be using it for doing the geothermal generator though where you have a setup with like the magma the lava and you're using doors to push the heat through and you need something to help transfer that heat but not too fast chlorine is your friend to move the heat slowly obviously if you were to use hydrogen in um, one of them geothermal setups the heat from the 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 lava the magma would transfer through the gas pretty much immediately and everything would melt because everything would get to 
1500 plus degrees in probably less than 30 seconds whereas with chlorine it doesn't transmit that fast and it gives you time to actually absorb that heat for geothermal generators like we're using or the more common one is of course and vanilla is uh, steam because you can use steam engines the magma turns the water into steam the steam engines turn the steam into power and water the water then recycles and that is your standard geothermal system that you can do and i'm sure by now anybody that's watching these videos will have seen many of those functioning and they of course are very useful the only limitation is the heat itself. Of course, the magma will cool down over time. It will solidify and continue to cool down. And in a few thousand cycles, you will run out of magma. And thousand, that, I'm just guesstimating that. I don't know. I've never actually gone that long to figure it out. But usually it lasts a series or a, or a playthrough anyway. Okay, so we now have the ethanol going into the loop. This is the first loop, and this loop will go through them thermo aqueducts making each time it goes through each of those machines reducing the temperature of the ethanol by a fixed figure which is 10 degrees so the ethanol going in at the bottom there and coming out at the top will be reduced by 50 degrees of course if you run it through again it will be reduced by another 50 degrees we need to be careful though that we don't freeze the ethanol because it will cause damage to the system and the whole purpose of this is that bottom chamber that it's about to enter now needs to get to negative temperatures specifically negative 60 or colder obviously the idea when i first started building this was it was going to get to negative 260 which would be for the hydrogen but we know that obviously the ethanol can't do that now i will need to chuck in a shutoff valve a thermal sensor on the pipe so that when the temperature of the ethanol is already colder than 50 it doesn't go through the machines because then of course we know it will freeze it at least then if it's cold enough it will recirculate it if it's warmed up it will recall it down now look at those machines the that bottom one is flickering orange this seems to be working well. You can see there we have liquid chlorine immediately that was already trapped in there, the hydrogen. Um, and yeah, the, this is where I actually had the, the, the whole purpose of me talking about chlorine is because this is where I found it out. This is never going to work to make that hydrogen turn into a liquid. It's just not. However, it did accidentally work for the chlorine. And yes, it was an accident, um, but we're going to go with it because liquid chlorine is a corrosive oxidizer and that is what we're going to use in the future so what i need to do is remove that hydrogen now and try and get all of the chlorine into here as much as we can and that will be the chlorine that is stored in that gas tank that we've already talked about and potentially bleach stone if we have some remember though that bleach stone is also used for the lettuces i believe it is a fertilizer for the crops so I can't just go oh, I'll dump everything in there and turn it into liquid and still talking on the crops you can see the the liquids here we've got a nice band of salt water trapped in the center there it does some really weird things and then pillars of the polluted water as well that drip down from the things what should happen the salt water should be floating uh, on top of the clean water wait yeah uh, I, I don't remember anyway in nature you know it right C uh, fresh water salt water they don't mix one floats on top of the other that's what should happen but it's not if that was happening we could put pumps at different levels uh, but it's not so what i need to do is and i'll do that off camera but i'm just going to basically make an extra couple of chambers and then just use the move tool to move the individual ones into there retrospective chambers and then pump out of those directly drill is still working hard as you can see three quarters of the diamond used up we already know that we have more diamond than we need anyway four thousand or just just shy of actually five thousand so just shy of five tons of space left in the cargo bay and then we need to fetch it back i'm not sure if there's a way to automate that i need to look into it if there is please let me know and i'll give it a go Basically, when it's full, it needs to come straight back. 
There's no reason for it to stay any longer. Now, I will have to, and I do grab it and tell it to come back. It'd be really nice if there was like an automated um, tile or something that says when cargo bay full, return to X. Not quite sure if it's that complex, but we'll see. And at the minute, you can see our farms are grinding to a halt due to issues still with polluted water. And, of course, salt water. But don't panic. There's always fried mushrooms that we've been surviving on since probably cycle 30. At now cycle 585, um, we're still relying on fried mushrooms. This colony really loves fungus. I did chuck it down, but I don't think I commented on it. The molecular, fo the molecular forge... You could do a lot of fancy things with you can even make your own eggs and some fancy resources however i'm looking at super coolant so the super coolant is what i need in order to get to the cryo level this lets you go to absolute zero to a point negative 270 something i believe it is uh, degrees before it solidifies i'm not sure if you can actually make it solidify because i'm not sure you can get colder than that but anyway this is what we need in order to turn the hydrogen into a liquid fuel. I will continue to work towards that until I get some information, hopefully from you guys, regarding the efficiencies of the oxidizers and stuff. I assume that the hydrogen still needs an oxidizer, which if it didn't, that would be even better. But as far as I'm aware, the rocket size is exactly the same. 35 tiles the speed however is almost twice as fast as the petroleum so for now though with how much petroleum we have literal hundreds of thousands of liters um we ain't never running out of petroleum fuel also the loop is infinite because oil into petroleum petroleum into rocket fuel and we're even using it to uh, produce plastic which we have what 200 300 tons of plastic more than we'll ever need so yeah i'm looking at this now to make the super coolant we need fluorine which is a resource i'd never heard of until this point now you can make it with another resource that we also don't have um, but you can also farm it mine it directly from asteroids so that is where we're going to go so in terms of the cryogenic fuel and making super coolant to make liquid hydrogen that is basically going to be in a few episodes time i've got no idea how many now what I'm going to do is concentrate on liquefying the chlorine as a as an oxidizer to see if that's an improvement and improve on our rocket production and our visuals of the galaxy, our current galaxy. Let's uncover all of the asteroids, gas pockets, etc. and figure out where all these resources are so that we can actually do the things that we need to do. Satellites themselves are okay, building, and I say satellites, sorry, telescopes are okay, but actually there is a research that we haven't completed yet where we can build a telescope on the rocket and it will uncover space as it travels, so I'm going to move to that. It's a lot better and easier than having to try and keep somebody alive on an asteroid just to get them to scan space and then come home. Also me looking there for graphite, which is yet another resource I need. As I said, fluorine, graphite are resources that I desperately need as long as the uh, neutronium as well. Neutronium for thorium to make the 900 plus degree heat insulated metal. There is neutronium alloy as well, which is a brand, brand new. It's the newest uh, resource that I'm aware of anyway I think it may come from the rocket tree extended that apparently has an overheat temperature of 2000 degrees so at that point you can you, you can literally build a metal chamber with lava in it and it still won't melt that's impressive hopefully for you guys it's not coming through because the editing software is allowing me to fix it in terms of frames per second but for me it's painful. The lag and the frames per second are down to, in some cases, 10. And it's quite difficult to play. Not getting no crashes, at least. 
But what I've decided to do is try and fix the problem by figuring out what can improve that. So I am going to wipe out the entire critter population, excluding, although I've just selected them, but I will cancel that, excluding the poke shells because they give us the steel. The drecos that we've had since the beginning and been farming, which give us the reed fiber, we have more than enough. Plastic from the glossy drecos, yeah, that we're never going to need more plastic. Diamonds, we have a couple of hundred thousand, uh, sorry, a couple of hundred tons as well. And coal, we're not even using as a fuel unless we send it elsewhere. So the hatches that we've been surviving on since the beginning as well can be wiped out. It will give us a massive boost in food as well, or at least meat, which is barbecue. I will leave the shines because the shines are hopefully giving us sun nymph eggs, which we use for our magic potions for zombie cures. Uh, but the pips that just hug us a lot, yeah, they're going to. So, Dreco's hatches, pips are turned, are being turned into food. It, it does, it does help with frames per second, by the way. Um, the biggest hit on frames per second is the, what they're called. The shipping pipes and the sweepers, especially in the modded ones where they're picking up from much large areas. There's no evidence yet that the amount of electrostatic thermal generators that I have are slowing down. I have done a test world actually where I built, I can't remember, but it must have been over a thousand. It was basically the entire asteroid was just full of them and running because I made the asteroid like a thousand degrees. Um... And it wasn't lagging, even though every single one of them was running. So I don't believe that they are the problem. There's no evidence to show me that. And to be honest, with the setup that I have now, I really don't fancy removing them. Especially when a lot of the setups are being called by them. And removing them would cause most things to overheat. Storage there, you can see it's getting ever so close to being filled up. We have two that look empty, two that have just been started, and then one that's about a quarter full. So I'll chuck down another four there. That is another four. Each one of those holds 300,000. So that's over a million there, kilos of storage. Uh, and of course, just got to wait for them to wipe out these critters. Now, yes... The diamond hatches and the stone hatches take forever to die. They have a health pool that is just through the roof. Uh, it makes sense. They're made of stone and diamond. So, yeah. So, yeah, you can see everybody's come over here to laser blast those. You can see, as well, I have cancelled the poke shells. Because we want the malts there for the lime. I know I can get it from... Fossil. Um, but I just like the idea, and it, it took a while to get those set up, so it's nice to have those going. Also, I'm interested in maybe turning them into the other variants, the water ones. For those of you that did like the critters, soz, uh, don't worry, I'm not removing any of the eggs. I'm not removing any of the incubation room. That is still running, so they will come back. All of these will come back. Uh, playing in the future, they already have. Um... But just culling it to see if it helps with FPS. And it does, slightly. Um, but I think if I remove the hatches from the, the get-go... Because we had... Before I killed these all, um, there was 39 in that top one. And I think 12 in the bottom. So we had 50 hatches. I'm not sure what the split was between the hatches. But yeah. So maybe... Non, none of the hatches and then the Drecos can come back. The Huggies can come back. Should be fine. So, just looking at this rocket that I've built called the Bus. It's just random names. right? Nobody's asked me to name anything, so I'm just randomly naming stuff. The bus is designed for asteroid number two. It's coming over to fetch them and call asteroid number two done. Um, looking at it at the minute, you can see all of the liquids have been collected. That is the ethanol that I was in bothered about. And you just saw there that the uranium, or at least the, the most of it that I could be bothered to select, has also been mined. I am now going to cut the power, cut all of these different various places off so that nothing is running. 
If we want to come back here for a random reason, we can. Uh, I'm not going to trash everything because it will just create clutter that may cause lag. So if I just cut off the power so we're not wasting fuel, cut off the various different machines so they're not actually moving and the frames per second should be increased. Uh, that will stop the generation of oxygen as well and just leave it to settle. Sending the bus over, we'll fetch those, bring them back and we'll call asteroid number two. Done. Then we are going to be a lot pickier because we now need to move to asteroids for other resources based on what we actually need. But there is no teleporting involved. There's no simple solution for it. So we will need to be a lot more selective on how we do it. We are going to be doing that in another episode though because we are at time now. So as we send the bus off to rescue the guys, finally from Asteroid 2, I wish you a thank you. Please subscribe and like if you like. Thanks for watching. Take care. Goodbye.